Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. We are going to get started in a moment. We're really glad to have you joining us for the launch of this e-course, Applying Integrated Policy Approaches to Accelerate the SDGs. Welcome. Just give us one or two moments as everyone comes into the room. So colleagues, we are here for the launch of a, an e-course, a very exciting one that uh, many of us in the UN system have been working on for some time. This is a course uh, designed for, for broad use by many different uh, types of colleagues from policy practitioners, UN personnel and others to really put the practical skills uh, in your hands to move forward the SDGs with integrated approaches. So we're going to get started and what I would ask from the beginning is we'll do a, a little run through of our agenda today. Uh, my name is Laurel Patterson. I work at UNDP and I lead our integration, our SDG integration portfolio. I'm going to hand over first to UNDP's associate administrator, Mr. Haliang Shu. I will be telling you rapid fire a little bit about the course after that. And then we're going to move to two different sets of discussions. First, from our partners at the Staff College and from UNICEF, Dr. Jafar Jafan and Dr. Vidya Ganesh, both of them have been really critical in creating uh, this course. They'll tell you about what's important in it and what's important to them. And then we have country perspectives. So we're really delighted to have Nelson Mufa, who's the resident coordinator in South Africa, Sarah Ferrer Olivella, she's the resident representative in Colombia for UNDP, and Dr. Vivi Yulatwati, she's the deputy minister for Maritime Affairs and Natural Resources. In Indonesia, she is also the head of the National SDG Secretariat. We will give as much time as we can for interaction, questions and answers, uh, and then we move forward with the course. So we hope we'll be able to encourage all of you uh, to sign up and get moving with that as well too. So without further ado, I hand over to Mr. Haliang Shu, Associate Administrator for UNDP. Haliang, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Laura and uh, welcome everyone to this launch of this e-course you know, uh, applying integrated policy approaches to accelerate the 2030 agenda as time is short uh, i would just uh, say welcome to everyone and uh, all protocols observed and also to save time i will just uh, mention three things very quickly first we all know that this year is the midpoint of the 2030 agenda. And in, in a few days time, there will be an SDG summit in New York for member states and all partners in development to take stock of the SDG status, progress status, and recommit ourselves to achieve SDGs by 2030. So this is a moment for reflection, but also for action. Secondly, we all know that the issues today we're dealing with are very complex. They are interconnected. No single ministry, no single agency can deal with any of these issues alone. So it will require integrated collaborative approach for us to achieve results at scale and with a speed within the time limit that we have. So the third point and the last point is that to do so, it will require everyone, all partners in government, in the UN and outside to be aware of the need to have this integrated approach, but also to have the ability, the knowledge and the tools, the systems to do so. And this is what this course is about. And uh, the course is an effort of joint effort by a number of agencies, UNDP, UNICEF, FAO, ILO, and the UNFPA, together with the UN staff system, uh, staff college. So this is uh, what this event is about. I hope uh, this provides an impetus to our joint effort to achieve the SDGs, to achieve the goals in the second half of this F, uh, of this match. Thank you very much. Over to you, Laurel. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Haleung Shu. We're going to move to show you a little bit about what is in the course. I'm reminded uh, by, by colleagues that 582 people have already signed up. Maybe that's you, maybe that's not you yet. So let us tell you what we have planned uh, in the course itself. All the links are here as well too uh, for you to be able to get yourself signed up. So this initiative falls in the purview as Hal Young had mentioned of something we've created called an Integrated Policy Practitioners Network. We have nine different entities who are part of this effort. Um, we have a series of knowledge cafes. We have a, a newsletter bulletin and a, and a web space on our, on our knowledge platform called Spark Blue to help connect uh, experts extremely practically, very hands-on. And we try wherever possible in the work of this network to also have different entities come together to present and discuss different elements, different considerations, different coalitions that are moving forward integrated policy approaches. Uh, in this case, the course very closely developed between UNDP and UNICEF with a lot of feedback from our colleagues in the IPP and you see the seven entities re referenced there and with the UN system staff college. We'll hear more about that as well too. So this is hosted by the staff college. It's interactive, it's self-paced, it doesn't cost you anything and you can leave us feedback so that we can keep making this better. The course is a very important one um, for us in the UN system. So the UN has several uh, learning journeys, learning opportunities for the SDGs. Uh, there is a very important learning course for UN staff and practitioners on the sustainable development cooperation framework. Uh, we have a, an overview of the SDGs course called the SDGs Primer, uh, a very, very important one that provides a lot of detail on the background of the agenda why the 17 goals, how they work together, and what it takes to deliver them. That's the SDG primer. And now we have this course, which fits as part of these top three uh, courses and learning journeys on integrated policy approaches to accelerate the SDGs. So the, the, the purpose and, and what brought us together on this course was to build from the SDG primer itself, which, as I mentioned, provides a strategic overview into something that was more practical and more hands-on, more oriented to the people that in, in different parts of the world and in different organizations are taking the work forward themselves. Um, our audience is, is both UN policy practitioners and other advocates, anyone else that's, that's interested in, in testing and trying out these approaches. As UNDP, we just launched an initiative on integrated insights last night and spent a lot of time with member states and other UN partners talking about what it takes to accelerate implementation. And for me, I see this course very much as part of that. We need to take this up across fields, um, across countries, and we really hope that this is a very practical uh, contribution to that aim. About four, four and a half hours um, in terms of the overall time that it takes to complete the course. Uh, what we have in the modules is meant to walk you through with as much logic as possible, the, both the concepts and then the practice of integrated policy. So we start with looking at how these are approached, what's the theory behind integrated policy approaches in the context of the 2030 agenda. And then from there, we get into how do we align? How do we assess the SDG alignment from different perspectives? How do we identify accelerators? And how do we enable both coherence and integration uh, in different mechanisms across different issues? Uh, and certainly uh, we give some examples of how that was done in response to COVID. Uh, the course itself includes videos, animations, a lot of examples, quizzes and checks boxes. So again, our effort across the board is to keep you engaged um, and make it as practical as possible so that you leave this course with something that you can immediately take into your work. You'll find that we will continuously come back to the course content. We will draw from the experiences of different colleagues who have taken the course or who are leading it in different ways. Um, so we really want to keep this live and interactive. So as much as you have the course itself, as I mentioned in the beginning, you will also have the IPPN space. You see some of the links here as well too, uh, so that you can deepen, connect, um, and hopefully refine what makes sense for you in your context to use these approaches effectively. There is a course certification 
um, which we're very, very happy with as well. So a certification is based on completion of, of our four modules. Um, it's signed by the, the, the three entities who are leading uh, this particular initiative, UNDP, UNICEF, and the System Staff College. And that comes hopefully as an incentive and motivation to get all the way through all four modules. And let me take us now into a, a reflection on the, the course itself, why it's important. We are just days from the SDG summit and of course moving towards the summit of the future, which is a summit planned for September 2024. So I'll welcome first Dr. Jafar Javan, the director of the UN Staff System College to share his reflections. Jafar, the floor is yours and welcome. Thank you very much, Laura. Dear colleagues, I'm really delighted to be speaking with you today. The UN System Staff College is happy uh, to be a partner in this very important initiative and to host this valuable course on our e-platform. Our interagency mandate places the college in a special position when it comes to strengthening UN coherence and integration. Indeed, all our learning programs are designed to encourage the UN system to share insights, work together, and create synergies. We are a vibrant community uh, bringing the UN system together to support countries in their search for effective solution to today's challenges. This course on policy uh, integration is timely and perfectly in line with our approach. For decades, we have lived in a world of specialization where ministries <laughs> and departments looked at the challenges through uh, the lens of their very particular expertise. Issues such as the economy, food security, climate, gender, and migration have been typically approached in silence. Now, however, we find ourselves in a world where progress is lagging. Instead of advancing, we are falling behind across many of the SDGs. Our challenge is to get much better at identifying the cross-cutting issues that will help deliver progress. We must get better at looking at ways to bring together different approaches for more effective and coherent results. This is where policy integration is emerging as one of the main ways to support countries in mm. accelerating progress on the SDG. The course we are jointly launching today will build a system-wide knowledge base on policy integration, giving concrete examples and introducing essential tools. It complements um, other UNSCC offerings like the SDG Primer, the UN Sustainable Development Cooperation Framework course, and the Policy Coherence and System Thinking course. Amid the current challenges to the SDGs and to multilateralism more broadly, we must continue to learn new skills and approaches. This course, we believe, delivers on that imperative. Thank you all for listening. Thank you so much, Dr. Javan. And we think it would be interesting um, for the audience joining us to really think through what are those intersections of the issues and challenges that they work on and that they're facing, and how do we identify where to act at their intersections, as Dr. Jafar was saying, so that we can make progress on multiple fronts. We're behind where we wanted to be. We're out of time. Nobody here needs to be told that. But this is a very interesting opportunity space that we hope the course also helps, helps to, uh, to elucidate a little bit. So let me hand over next to Vidya Ganesh. Vidya is the director of the Division of Data analytics planning and monitoring at UNICEF. She has worked on the SDGs from the beginning uh, with us on many integrated initiatives in the past. So Vidya, it's great to see you and the floor is yours. Wonderful, thank you so much. And, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody all around who, who have joined us. That in itself uh, speaks a lot to the importance of coming for us coming together and trying to find joint solutions that are scalable and impactful. So uh, really, I, I'm delighted at the strong interest in this event and, and, uh, and the possibilities that e-course, this particular e-course can, uh, can open up for all of us. 
So, uh, Dr. Jafar, thanks so much for that wonderful, uh, inspirational integrate uh, uh, your comments. Which, which, which again, for me, it's like, you know, I I never get bored of being reminded of how important it is to continue to find system solutions that brings us all together to find uh, common solutions. I say this because we conceptually think it's important and we strive towards it, but it's but it's not so straightforward. So, so, uh, so really, thank you so much for that uh, very helpful uh, scene setting comments, as, as did Holyang. So, so I, I just want to share my perspectives from again uh, from from two angles um, um, to add to what has already been said. Like, what? Why does policy integration matter? And uh, and and give you some reflections of when we come to addressing the issues for children. Uh, how again such an such an approach is is critical. So um, I mean it's it it's it's not a surprise to anybody, but I think we continue to ask ourselves when we get up in the morning, how come we live in a world that is so full of paradoxes? What was it like 20 years ago, 30 years ago? We can't even remember anymore to some extent. So, you know, we, 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 we remember the good old days where we felt like, you know, we were really advancing and, and we were uh, progressing. We still are, it's not that. Yet, you know, we, we find ourselves in a situation that in spite of that great unprecedented level of prosperity, nearly half of world's population live in poverty and children, unfortunately, are really bearing the brunt of the deprivation. We are releasing our report in a, in a, in a couple of days. And I must say, even for me working in UNICEF for so many years, I found it very sobering. Um, and, uh, and again, in a couple of other paradoxes, innovations and productions ha have been made and there's enough food to feed everyone, yet 800 million experience uh, hunger. Um, we have made advances in technology, yet more than a third of people don't have access to, to the internet. We enjoy freedoms, privileges, conveniences, yet conflict and extreme weather event is, can change everything in an instant like we're seeing um, uh, these days. Um, economic uncertainty, crisis, climate change occur amidst lingering impacts of the pandemic, which are still unfolding. Uh, and, and and we ask ourselves if if we were to face another pandemic again, you know, are we are we going to come out of it better than than we did with the last two, the Ebola and the and the and the COVID? And it is exasperating the the inequalities. However, uh, and we th there is hope, and 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 then I don't mean that in a philosophical way. I really do feel that we have the evidence and the knowledge of what works. Solutions are there, and with that, now with new technology, new types of data, emergence of AI, let's harness it well, um, you know, and increase connectivity amongst others. And these will uh, opportunities that have been unavailable to uh, earlier generations. So we have game changers that we didn't have before. We just have to think differently about how these game changers help us uh, to solve these uh, problems that feels wicked and not. Uh... So therefore, this is where I think the policy integration uh, really, really matters to develop solutions across disciplines, across sectors, and, and really with a much better understanding of the root causes of poverty, inequality, and social inclusion. It, where Lauren just, again, once again, reminded us, find, find that sweet spot, if I can add that word to your point about, you know, where the integration really It can be can so let me start to wrap up by like saying for you know we advance the well-being for children right and 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 um, you know we, UNICEF is working with with all of with all the partners civil society and more importantly with communities and young children and they really are telling us what's what what challenges they face but they're also telling us where the solutions are and if you hear what the solutions that they're proposing it's all about an integrated whole of society uh, approaches right so uh, so i'll give you a simple example uh, it's a it's a difficult problem but it's a it's a simple example to understand so for example we use integrated approaches in in addressing uh, the harmful practices of child marriage so the, the projections are that if business continues as usual, it'll take another 300 years before we can end the child marriage. And that's our goal, right? So that's, that's the SDG goals. And the drivers of this particular practice 
tend to be socioeconomic, which includes poverty and inequality, lack of access to quality education, limited life choices, as well as social norms, amongst others. So if you want to address these drivers in a, in a coordinated, coherent way across all partners with, with community, we are definitely going to need integrated approaches for which we need good, high quality uh, integrated policy solutions. Second example is data is another powerful integrator which brings together uh, actors and, 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 and partners. And, uh, and has already been mentioned, um, you know, data is a, small, is a strong, uh, basis to develop high quality common country common country assessments that brings the the UN system together to to work on on common solutions. So these are I, I can go on, but I hope but I really am so excited that we now have yet another opportunity to engage and learn. And and the and the e course we're launching today is a yet another concrete steps towards it. Do take the course. Uh, engage with it and 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 keep and let us keep improving it and most importantly let's see how it's uh, how it how useful it is to to at the country level and i'm really eagerly looking forward to hearing the next set of panelists so thank you very much enjoy and good luck <laughs> thank you so much Vidya. thanks for those examples as well too because i think calling this has really been our effort throughout the development of this course our integrated policy practitioners network it needs to make sense uh, where we work. It needs to make sense against what people are experiencing every day. Um, I think the theory, the vision of the SDGs, that North Star, we have it. That's not the question we're asking. The question we're asking is how do we implement and how do we do that strategically, effectively, as intelligently as we can in the second half. And that's really where we want to position this work and the conversation that will open next with some of our colleagues uh, based in different countries. So I'll turn first to Nelson Mufa, who's the UN resident coordinator in South Africa, leading a lot of interesting work in this space. Uh, and then I'll hand over to Sarah Olivella in Colombia and then to Dr. Vivi joining us from Indonesia. But first, Nelson, over to you. The floor is yours and welcome again. Well, thank you so much and, and, and good morning, good day to all who are joining in a stand on existing protocol. Uh, mindful of the uh, limited time we've got as well. I think I should just really focus on trying to put on the table South Africa's own unique perspective with regards to advancing what we're talking about, which is integrated uh, policy delivery. Uh, we've heard how this is uh, at the core of the um, SDG agenda and the 2030 um, agenda for sustainable development. And uh, this is something we've been grappling with uh, in the South Africa perspective, because as part of the uh, repositioning of the UN development system, we're also called upon to do integrated planning and integrated uh, delivery. And of course, the planning comes with the policy making and uh, advancing solutions that will help the country and the people of South Africa take forward um, their development aspirations. And we have uh, in this context uh, interlinked uh, challenges around inequalities, around uh, poverty, and around high unemployment, uh, one of the highest rates in the world. So really any offer that the UN system can put on the table has to help the country respond to this uh, intractable uh, challenges that they've been facing for decades now. It's also part of the appetite uh, uh, legacy. So one of the things we've been trying to do, um, actually taking advantage of the preparations for the SDG summit and a reflection with government as well and stakeholders about what is it that we need to do with regards to accelerating action towards the achievement of the SDGs and focusing on the um, interlinkages and also the multipliers, because that I think that's very important. And the SDGs push diagnostics we work with uh, UNDP on helped tremendously also in this regard and, and brought to the fore some of the things that we've already uh, been working on and, 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 and we, we were starting to, to take for granted. One of those is to look at the issue of um, how if we focus on the energy access and uh, transition pathway for South Africa, that could be something that will help move the needle on a number of other fronts, be it gender equality considerations, uh, decent work, uh, skilling of young people, the socioeconomic impacts of the lack of energy, but also the part that communities and stakeholders can play with regards to the transition to renewables and low carbon emissions. So this has forced the UN 
uh, country team to, to go beyond its uh, silos, to start thinking about how everything is interconnected. We had organized ourselves around a cooperation framework, had four strategic priority outcomes, Energy was not necessarily neatly packaged into any of the outcomes. Uh, one was on inclusive growth, one on uh, human capital uh, development and, and social transformation, one on governance, and one on uh, uh, managing the environment and building resilience. So, but the energy point relates to all of these uh, uh, aspects. And so we, we, we've set up, I think, a cross results group uh, uh, sort of matrix ways of working bringing the whole UN country team together at different levels, first starting with the UN country team, then technical colleagues working on this, but even doing some strategic political work all in an integrated manner, bringing the work of ILO, UNDP, UNODC, uh, UNFPA, UNICEF, UN Women, even the World Bank that sits in our country team together to reflect about how the UN can put together a policy offer that really responds to the aspirations around the just part of the energy transition and energy access. Because if we focus on leaving no one behind and the just part, that brings in the social, the economic, the environmental, and even the political aspects of what we need to do in country. And so a lot of our work, I mean, in this context has to focus on justice, social justice, especially because of the history of the country and the inequalities we're talking about. Uh, and also operating in a upper middle income country where uh, resources to do your traditional development work are quite constrained. So integrated policy work that the government can also take seriously and see we're, we're, we're serious players that I can think through and connect the dots for them and uh, help break the silos. I heard uh, recently in, in, in the discussion already that the, the, the whole need for a whole of society and a cross government approach to doing this and the UN trying to do that deliberately and intentionally has helped uh, to some extent. So we, we expect South Africa's, for example, SDGs acceleration commitment for the SDG summit um, to, 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 to touch on some crucial issues that um, uh, highlight the importance of connecting the dots from a policy making point of view and policy delivery point of view uh, that will help the country on uh, tackling the issues of poverty, unemployment and inequalities, particularly gender uh, uh, inequalities. And, and this is what we're pushing forward and, and we expect to see some progress in that regard. The UN is working quite hard, uh, of course, uh, leveraging all uh, the, the, the assets and knowledge we, we, can, we can bring to bear and, and, and making good progress in that, in that regard. So um, we will see, I think, uh, South Africa stepping forward as it's already doing with regards to the Just Energy Transition uh, Partnership approach, but also looking at social protection to, through the lens of how do we ensure that particularly the female-led households who need social protection, who need to be uh, on, paid, on paid care work that has to be, uh, uh, I think, taken more seriously, integrated into the formal uh, uh, payment of social grant uh, pathways that this also helps because of course if we've, we've, we've realized if you touch uh, the, the female-led households that has an, a cascading effect as well on education and the well-being of children and food and security and employment itself and um, also uh, even on climate uh, action and building resilience so we're making good progress uh, this this is some of the reflections we currently have and we look forward to the, the contribution that this course can, 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 can bring uh, because um, uh, it's a struggle as part of the repositioning of the UN system to, for the UN to actually walk the talk. And we see that uh, in as much as we do have the, uh, the processes in place, uh, the documents in place, the courses in place, um, a lot more of UN staff, particularly those who are working in country and practice, practicing, need these sort of courses to be able to sit back and reflect and intentionally connect the dots around working together, planning together, monitoring together, and even communicating together. So um, I thank you all for, for, for this opportunity, and I look forward to uh, supporting this going forward. Thank you so much, Nelson. I mean, fantastic and wonderful to walk through an example that you gave in a just energy transition, also social protection, female 
headed households, unpaid care. And of course they meet, those two meet in, in different ways and intersect that can be quite powerful for, for the country and for progress. I also really appreciate, I'm sure for many of you who are listening into this conversation, we all understand planning in sectors and working in strategic pillars and so on, but what an incredible experience of the South Africa country team trying to find what cuts across, what intersects. And for me, I really think this is where we need to rethink the SDGs or at least how we're implementing the SDGs in the second half. It is never meant to be a list of SDG 17 boxes. It's a network, it's a set of bridges. And those bridges, I would argue, are not even at the goal level. You see this tremendous interaction at the target level and in the indicators where we're measuring progress and getting better and better. Are we there? No, we know the data gaps are real too. You'll hear all about that next week at the summit, but it's getting better and better. And I think part of what we're trying to unlock in this course, as Nelson was just reflecting his last points there, we need to also be able to challenge our own assumptions of where we think intersections might be, where we think multipliers might be. And when we really get into the SDG indicators and the SDG target, when we utilize analytics differently, it not only challenges the way we think about the issues, it challenges the way we think about our own portfolios. And that's what we need to be doing at this point. So really congratulations, uh, Nelson, to your team. And thank you so much for joining us today. We'll be keen to keep in touch with you uh, as the work moves forward. And I'll invite next Ms. Sarah Ferrer Alivello, who is the UNDP country direct, who's the UNDP res rep in Colombia, to take the floor next. Sarah, good to see you. Over to you. Thank you, Laurel. Um, I'm very pleased to join the launch of this course on policy integration for SDGs, which, in fact, Nelson just reinforced how timely it is and how needed it is at the country level. Um, I believe for the UN agencies at country level, but also for governments themselves. Policy integration is not a nice thing to have. It, it is a must. It is a must if we are to lift this agenda and really uh, uh, accelerate the pace to achieve it. Um, the UN reform, uh, when it was launched, it already had at its heart the need for this policy integration and make sure that countries were equipped with these tools Evidence is critical to see all these interlinkages to take better decisions. What I wanted to do today with you is to share two examples from Colombia. Colombia, um, in our strategic cooperation framework, uh, the government requested specific technical assistance in the accelerating what tools we could put in place to accelerate the pace to achieve the SDG. And the example I wanted to, to share with you is a tool we developed together with the Ministry of Planning and the Ministry of Finance called Policy Priority Inference Tool, uh, which is part of our efforts as a country level of the integrated national financing framework. This is a joint initiative that we have with UN Women, UNICEF and UNDP. And what we have done is for instance, in this policy priority inference tool, we have analyzed 20 years of bu budget data and more than 90 SDG indicators. And what we have seen is how these indicators um, behave over the, over the years. And we have used these basically to inform our new development plan 2023-2026. It's a tool because this it, it, it assists to see how predict or forecast, if you like, what are going to be the future trends unless you if you continue investing the same way. And basically, what it lets you see is the interrelation of various indicators. What we did find that to affect change for instance, is not always a matter of increasing budget spending. What is more effective is how you redeploy basic budget lines and the spending is more efficient and better allocated. And this is critical for many governments, including the Colombian government, because in times of very limited fiscal uh, space and many competing priorities following the, the, the many different crises that government that countries are overcoming, 
you really have to use resources widely. The other thing we learn using this tool is that you have better chance of affecting change if you concentrate on budget sensitive topics to catalyze SDG accelerator. For instance, we notice that breastfeeding support, uh, addressing gender-based violence, providing learning spaces, common learning spaces, treating infectious disease, ensuring rural water supply, rehabilitating forests, formalizing labor, or upgrading industries for sustainability. These very sensitive indicators, they really behave in a different way and really could have the potential to transform the outcomes. Um, this is an example of how an analysis of seeing the different variables, evidence that we have on how a budget behaves, no matter how many resources you, you allocate, but if you choose widely, you can have a different uh, outcomes. Now, the challenge that we face at the current time is how then you transfer these skill sets of methodologies and learning how to program these languages and SDG indicators so government officials have this know-how and can actually own it and incorporate it in their day-to-day -day business. Another example I wanted to share with you as part of the inter integrated uh, national financing framework is the SDG tagging methodology. Over the last four years, we also tag four years of national budgets. And, and why this is important? Because we wanted to understand how the resources were de being deployed. And then we compare it with SDG spending, expanding of the government over the last four years. And you see, one thing is the, 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 the priorities on these financing flows, where they are located, where the politicians, where the policymakers, where the international commitments, you commit to the agendas. And yet the budget allocation and more importantly, the expenditure does not necessarily speak to the commitments. So, so I wanted to, to, to highlight this because uh, as the, understanding the budget flows of a country, whether they are private or public, whether they are you know, domestic or international, putting all of these in the mix are really critical to understand what are the uh, acupuncture points that you can touch to create or influence really the course of the country to achieve the SDGs. Um, I just wanted to wish you all uh, 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 a great course. And also I believe that is a, this course provides us a, a great opportunity to strengthen our collective capacity for policy integration as a UN finally, but also more importantly, as the broader development community, because development community has to be the whole community and not just a few. Thank you very much. Sarah, thank you so much. It's great examples. And I think this is also an audience that would love at a different point to hear more um, about the tools that you've been using and how that's been able to uh, pull out some different insights, even within contexts that are, are, are constrained fiscally. And colleagues, although that is not a, you know, something that we have built into this course, the point Sarah raises is extremely important. We are operating, many countries operating in spaces that are highly constrained from a fiscal perspective. Some of the work at UNDP we've been doing recently has also looked at growth pathways for countries. And we've asked questions, provided new projections around how carbon intensive those pathways are, how inclusive are those pathways. And again, this work that we're putting forward here, this course opportunity, it's an opening into some of those bigger questions as well too. And how do we navigate with those bigger constraints in mind? How do we select choices that are lowering carbon intensity of our pathways that are more inclusive? And how do we find, as Sarah is saying, these acupuncture points, um, even in contexts which are fiscally constrained, it isn't to suggest that we should not continue the advocacy that happens by the UN and many others on the financial global financial architecture reform. 
But here again, what we think is so important is that we're able to move forward today the best we can in imperfect situations. This is the heart of you know, really making acceleration work for as many countries as we can. So Sarah, thank you very much for putting those challenges and examples also on the table. I will turn next to Dr. Vivi Ulaswadi. She's our last speaker before we'll go into some questions. Dr. Vivi, it's good to see you. So Dr. Vivi is the Deputy Minister for Maritime Affairs and Natural Resources, but she's also the head of the National SDG Secretariat, a tremendous champion for the SDGs and innovation around it. Dr. Vivi, I understand you also have a couple of slides that you'll show, and uh, we're really delighted to see you today. Is that right, Dr. Vivi, or did I get that wrong? Uh, hi, Laura. It's really a pleasure to meet you and also dear uh, pan panels as well as participants. If it is possible, can I share the slides? Absolutely. Uh, it's still, oh, okay. Sorry, okay. Yeah, I think we, Indonesia also shared the same experience as well as challenges with other countries. So, uh, after COVID, we have to prepare our long-term development plan 2025-2045, and uh, we have to, uh, to develop the economic transformations. Uh, for us, economic growth serves as an enabler for the SDGs in the short term, while also over time, the SDG agenda itself uh, becomes a catalyst for inclusive and low-carbon growth pathway. So as you may see here, uh, after COVID, uh, Indonesia growth trajectory uh, already back on track, but it's not enough. We want to uh, grow higher, but clean. Uh, so, of course, uh, uh, the catalyst uh, to, to be inclusive and low carbon growth pathways need a new ways of, uh, of doing the business in the development context. So that's why uh, we discussed with the UNDP and, uh, and uh, of course, and other colleagues uh, in Indonesia side. Uh, and uh, at that time, I, I saw in the web actually about the SDG integrations and want to have this kind of analysis or diagnostic uh, for Indonesia. So that's why we learn more about the simulator uh, built by UNDP and use this diagnostic to, uh, to do for Indonesia context. So starting from there, we uh, we, we, we compiling uh, the target, uh, the uh, SDGs uh, data, and of course uh, using uh, some data from the UN Stat uh, uh, API. Uh, following this uh, methodology, the simulator, uh, the, this uh, simulator classifies the indicators into five categories the substantial progress on track, and also the ones that are fair progress, but acceleration needed, and also some other that are limited or no progress and or deterioration. Uh, so all of these, uh, 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 the intention is really to utilize the limited funding as well as the time. So the re this is the result. Uh, based on the analysis of the SDG push for Indonesia, we we use the SDGs 11 uh, as an entry point to integrate the policy intervention that could leverage the SDGs progress. Uh, so uh, especially the rest of the SDG goal uh, are include uh, SDG 1, 2, 3, 8, 10, 12, 13, uh, 16, and 17, uh, which is uh, which was articulated in uh, Indonesia's latest uh, VNR. Uh, this will, uh, we believe that it could contribute to achieve the SDGs. Uh, currently, significant progress has been made in the goal six and 11 on access to water and sanitation, hand washing facilities, safe public transportation, water resources, and open green uh, space uh, respectively. So uh, looking at the analysis of the synergies and trade-offs, the SDGs 11 uh, has more than 20 synergy links with other targets shared uh, across uh, uh, 14 of uh, uh, 16 uh, SDGs. Thus getting this indicator back on track for 2030 
through bold and innovative development policies, uh, we believe could help elevate many other indicators as well, some of which are also currently uh, 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 lagging. Uh, this is the, uh, the ones that uh, we found uh, building from uh, our national priorities following the pathway ref uh, 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 reflect policy investment with the most potentials of the accelerations for the for Indonesia, particularly in target 3.8, target 8.5, uh, and then also 11.1 uh, and target 16.6. Uh, and this is uh, some uh, explanations for each uh, SCG interlinkages of each target. Uh, and we could direct uh, use this, uh, what, what we call as a background study for uh, developing our long-term development 2025, 2045. And also we are now preparing for the mid-term development plan 2025, 2030. And of course, uh, it's really helped uh, for us, not only uh, Ministry of Planning, but also we can uh, discuss with uh, related uh, sectors. This is also the other uh, examples of each indicators. Uh, this is the scenario based, based on the SDGs push. Uh, we could uh, use the, the 48 integrated accelerators in the area of the government uh, uh, program in the social protections, green economy, as well as the, the digitalizations. Uh, this is only the examples for the goal uh, three. Uh, I, I believe, uh, yes, this is for the children under five. You can see here, if we use the SDGs push scenario, we could accelerate the achievement of the SDGs. Uh, this is the, the, ex, the, the, the modeling about uh, understanding the potential impact of the drivers. Uh, uh, using the micro and macroeconomic framework. So basically uh, the inputs using the scenario from uh, uh, some documents and then uh, uh, based on this model, we could see the output as well as the outcome. So uh, this is really uh, help us to develop the, the, the micro planning in which can be, I mean, the long-term development will be enacted as a law in the Indonesia context. And by doing this, it could be a, a basis for sectors as well as the local governments to develop further their own uh, plan. So uh, this is the example, I mean, the, the, the summary that, the, that Indonesia could achieve the SDGs uh, focusing for these uh, targets. Uh, within the next uh, seven years. The other things that we also do is uh, revise our roadmap using almost the same logic, uh, the interlinkages, but at the indicators uh, level. And this is of course uh, through a more in, uh, through inclusive uh, process, engaging uh, sectors as well as uh, other stakeholders. Uh, this is the result, yeah. Uh, is the, the, the result is almost consistent with the results from the SDGs push in which we have to prioritize uh, uh, sectors uh, in relate with health, governance, water and sanitation, education, inequality, energy, as well as housing and, and, and environment. Uh, in the roadmap, we also revise the financing gap in which show that in the previous roadmap, the gap of the financing is one trillion US dollar, but before the COVID, and now it's increasing to one point seven trillion US dollar. Other, uh, this is, I mean, uh, all of these uh, SDGs uh, interlinkages really help us to also uh, accelerate other uh, commitment in the localizing SDGs, uh, not only in the finance for sure, and of course to. Uh, accelerate in the collaborations with other stakeholders. Thank you very much. Dr. Vivi, thank you so much. It's so impressive to see the, the work that Indonesia is leading. Extremely, extremely detailed colleagues, extremely rigorous, 
and a real effort. I think some of you have commented in the chat as well too, to utilize the, the strongest evidence base possible, uh, mix methods, right? Combine them together in ways that really help us think through budgeting considerations, implementation considerations, et cetera. So thank you very much, uh, Dr. Vivi. We're in the final minutes, colleagues. And what I wanted to do at this point is reflect on two questions that have come up in the chat. And Nelson, if you don't mind, I'll put the first question to you and to Sarah. It's an interesting one. And then Dr. Vivi, I wanna come back to you on one as well too. But for both Nelson and for Sarah, there's questions that are coming through, uh, I think in the spirit of leaving no one behind that are asking questions about how local actors are part of the SDCF, how can they be part of the rollout of these integrated approaches? How can they access these kinds of materials and so on? So Nelson, maybe I'll, I'll pass the floor to you first and then to Sarah. How do we really ensure that a stakeholder base beyond the UN perhaps is engaged in both the thinking, conceptualization and implementation of this work? Over to you, Nelson, first. Um, no, thank you for that. And it's a very, I think, pertinent question. In our, in our approach here, everything is guided by the mantra of leaving the one behind. And that means including local stakeholders uh, first in the assessment that we had to do with regards to the common country assessment, to the consultations around the preparations of our cooperation framework, and then also the engagement with government, even right now, uh, with regards to its national SDGs acceleration commitment. So including intentionally uh, our local stakeholders is something that we take very seriously and we advance uh, with the full support of government and other stakeholders here in this context. Uh, in South Africa, there's this consultation, consultation, consultation is the way forward and inclusion. You, you cannot do any other thing uh, beyond that for it to have any credibility. So um, it's, it's, it's and, uh, the, there is a social compacting process, which uh, the, 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 the country is going through as well. Uh, they have formal structures, organized groups, uh, and also informal structures. And the unions are very um, uh, influential here. So we have to do that as well. But also looking at the just energy transition uh, pathway, which I, I, I spoke about, um, the only way you, you, you could take forward the just part of the transition is if you're engaging with and leveraging the contribution of uh, local communities. And um, uh, so we are also doing that. And the UN's role in there is trying to ensure that we're convening, we're engaging, we're helping uh, communities to be able to be part and parcel of the policy making process and the validation of that as well. Going right up to uh, uh, Komati and the community around Komati, which is the decommissioned coal, coal power plant, for example, and making sure that voices of communities are included, working with the World Bank that is funding, funding that as well to be able to do that. ILO has a, a very rich and dense history in the country. So the UN is taking advantage of ILO and its uh, connections with the unions and the grassroots here to be able to do some of that work as well. And we're seen as trusted partners to advance um, some of that. So it is, I would say, something that we take very seriously is the responsibility we have to be able to uh, help uh, accompany, uh, particularly the local communities and those in rural spaces and the, uh, the localization of the SDGs and uh, the structures that the government is putting in place through what they're calling the district development model gives us an entry point to be able to just move beyond our offices in Pretoria and Johannesburg to go into the provinces and municipalities as well. But it's work in progress. I don't think we can say we're, we're, we're totally there and succeeding. There's always much more we can do and should be doing. And um, we're definitely in the right direction. Thank you, Nelson. Sarah? Yeah, just very briefly, um, I echo everything that Nelson said. You know, this is something that we, we, we do also in Colombia. But here, just I wanted to put up front the, the, the you know, Colombia is in a, in a peace building process and reconnecting their development pathways for those who were left behind during the conflict. So there is a very deliberate attempt by the UN country team in building peace that sustainable development, human development is at the center. And for that, we really take a very specific focus on those communities who have been left behind and excluded from the development pathway. So just to say in everything we do at all levels, we always have very much 
uh, a focus on those communities excluded, affected by the conflict. Uh, uh, you, you know, but at the, I wanted to bring the issue of intersectionalities. Is not the same a woman Afro descendants in uh, the periphery and Colombia that the same woman in Bogota in the capital. Those the what you have to overcome in terms of adjusting and target and public policy, taking account of those voices whilst you develop that are critical. I'm not going to be extended, but of course, I would love to continue discussing with all of you. Thank you, Sharon. It's a fantastic point. So thank you for putting emphasis on it. Dr. Vivi, we just have one minute, but one of okay. the things for, uh, you, you know how this happens at the end of these webinars, but I don't want to miss the opportunity, Dr. Vivi, for you to share a little bit uh, about the work that Indonesia is pioneering at local levels. And for colleagues that aren't aware, in Indonesia, there's more than 74,000 villages uh, and with some phenomenal efforts uh, across from national, regional to local level, there is SDG planning. It is adapted to local needs, almost exactly, Sarah, in the way that you were reflecting just now. And of course, some real efforts to align, Dr. Vivi, those initiatives to measure them, very significant efforts at data collection, harmonization, and so on. So just wanted to give you a minute, Dr. Viv, to maybe share a little bit, and I think it would be inspiration for others that are joining us today. Yeah, two points about the localizing, and it is very related with the question with uh, rural questions. Uh, uh, in, the, uh, in the SDGs, uh, it is an opportunity to uh, localize the global principles at the local local level uh, up until village level. So now uh, in the um, uh, uh, high level political forum uh, in July, we presented the uh, SDGs village uh, uh, with the Minister of Village. Uh, and also somehow there is also an opportunity to globalize a local values. So it's really a works that makes uh, them engage in the global context uh, with the SDGs. The second point I want to uh, point out the impact. Uh, impact in the SDGs mean miserable. So I keep talking to my colleagues here in Indonesia to improve our database and also improve our capacity in analysis. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. V. And the reality is that statistical gaps aren't just numbers, of course, they reflect people uh, whose experiences we don't understand, we're not capturing, and therefore we can't respond, we can't be as effective as we would want to be. Uh, in responding to different needs. So Dr. Vivi, thank you for that. Colleagues, this wraps up 9.01 uh, Eastern time, not bad. Uh, and I really wanna thank everyone for joining today. Thanks for all of our incredible speakers, really an interesting discussion. Let's build it forward. You find all of the details on the screen, please sign up. Uh, please join us in the Integrated Policy Practitioners Network. And to Nelson's point at the end, I mean, dialogue, discourse, consultation, this is the space we all need to be active in to let keep conversation and discourse spaces like the one we've had today uh, moving forward as well too. So thank you everyone. I wish you a good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, and that's all, all from us. Thank you to the speakers. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye, thank you. Bye, thank you.